So, ready to shoot. I am back. Hope you had a nice lunch. By the way, did you eat all eat lunch? Because symbolically, when you learn something and then you eat food, the food symbolically represents the absorption or digestion of what you learned. So it's a very good sign is after you go to a lecture or a seminar and you feel very hungry, even though you didn't do any work, it's because you've absorbed and digested so much that now you need to ground and, and, and energetically replace it physically. So that's why when you study for a test, even though you're just laying around studying, you feel hungry because you are actually need to, to symbolize the, with food. That's how that works. I wanted to show you about um, the concept, because very often I use the term, and I showed you this morning on the uh, board, the term oversoul. And what does that mean? And how does that relate to you as an individual? How many of you actually have heard this term before? You have heard it before? Because it's not common, uh, commonly used. Once again, I like to use an analogy to get the concept across because it helps to see a picture and get the concept down in your mind. If you think of the oversoul almost like an umbrella, like the master intelligence or umbrella. Okay. okay. Now, from that master intelligence comes what I call, or what you may have heard of, as life streams. Almost like the tentacles hanging from a jellyfish. It's kind of like that. These are the life streams, or you can even say they're personalities. Now, these personalities or life streams, as they emanate from the master intelligence, pass through layers of realities. Some are physical, some are non-physical. It depends on the reality. These are realities. Now here's the interesting part. Where the life stream intersects with a reality, these are lifetimes or existences. Etc., etc. Understand? So that means for you as an individual sitting here today, this could be you. Well, let's say this is your oversoul and this is your life stream. That means you exist on all of these different realities simultaneously. Remember, there is no time, there is no space. There just is. If you want to take that concept of no time, past, present, and future and, and apply it to the as above, so below concept, like how do you deal with that at this moment? How does that apply to your life at this moment? Well, we're sitting here in Chicago and it's, you know, on a Saturday afternoon but at the same moment, at the same moment, it's Sunday morning in Tokyo. At the same moment, they're having breakfast in Fiji. It's early morning. Same planet, same moment, different times. As above, so below. So take that concept. Of at this moment, it's really two different days, many different, 24 different time zones on the same planet. Extrapolate that now into creation past, present, and future. At this moment, Benjamin Franklin is in Philadelphia, the Romans are invading some country, uh, Atlantis is existing at the same moment. That would be one, but my theory would work when you go back 
Mm. Yes. That explains that. Exactly. It's at, all is at the same moment. It's really called what the best term for it is the eternal now. It's an eternal now. That's what it is. Everything's happening at this moment. Except that the human brain is finite. So you're concentrate the left brain, the ego, who you think you are, is saying, okay, I can only concentrate on this moment right now. Even though there's infinite moments all about that I can focus on if I want to, I can only focus on this one at a, at a time. Because you just can't handle it. That's the problem with the Kundalini activation we spoke about this morning. Because then it's like, boom, you're like, you know all of this. It's like, well, who am I then? I'm all of this. Whoa, I can't handle it. Then, then you, that gets kind of squeezed into your left brain, and your left brain goes, whoa, I'm nuts now. That's what happens. Can't focus. That's why it's so dangerous until you slowly grow and grow and grow, until you start to encompass the understanding of all of this in sequence. And then you can get the totality when you get to that point. But I have some very important things to tell you about this concept that's going to be very different about what you've learned all these years. It might bother you, and you might accept it. Depends. Up to you. But here you are. Here you are in this particular example of a live stream. And what would these be to you? Let's say, let's say that this is you right now. And in this timeline, this is you. Who are these to you then? Same live stream as you, different realities. How are they related to you? How, what would you call them? What kind? What would you say they are? What was the term you might use for them? Exactly. They would be alternate selves of you. Still, you, alternate selves of you. What would you call this being? Here you are now. These are your alternate selves. Here's another personality within your master intelligence oversoul. What is this to you? Wouldn't it still be the same alternate? It would be an alternate self, but it wouldn't be exactly the same life stream. It would be an alternate, you'd have the same master intelligence of the same oversoul, but not the same personality stream. So that's like the life stream from this incarnation. Yes, yes. However, this could be ET level. This could be angelic level. Could, yeah? This might be a lobster creature in some alternate universe. But you see? Okay. So, but still, it's part of you. This is where the distortion comes in of twin souls, twin flames, twin... what is it? Twin soulmates, twin flames, twin souls. What does that mean? Very widely bantered about terms. And basically, these are the three categories. Remember, everything's in threes. So these are the basic three categories of how personalities interrelate with one another. And quite basically, a soulmate, and all of us here could be soulmates, is simply a band or groupings of soul personalities who tend to travel together in existence because they are familiar with each other's energy and they feel comfortable. Think of it kind of like trees in a forest.